The sixth generation of video game consoles define a more memorable time in gaming history. Graphics made a huge leap, the internet became mainstream, and Microsoft jumped in. While well, Sega faded out. In 2001, the world was blessed with the Game Boy Advance, a true force to be reckoned with in terms of portable gaming. Over time, it developed a kick-ass library of games. And within the first year, Dragon Ball Z made its way onto the platform. It was called The Legacy of Goku. I remember the really stupid commercial where some kid's mom is driving like a maniac and he's in the back seat just trying to play the game. And then he gets out with Super Saiyan hair and... I don't know. When it comes to me personally, Dragon Ball Z dominated my youth. I was pretty eager to get my hands on this game and eventually I did. But look at all this Dragon Ball Z stuff I own. I mean, well, maybe not Sonic, but I got this poster, the Spirit Bomb Goku lamp. Yeah, I had strategy guides and magazines and how to draw books and this power coloring cards and... Now kill fuck! Nail hotat oe se moven! Whoa. Sorry. Bad memories. I started speaking dinosaur language out of reflex. I meant to grab this. There was all kinds of stuff in magazines like these. Like here, the casting ball. We pretend to cast the fictitious Dragon Ball movie. Fictitious? Yeah, I like that, fictitious. They haven't made it yet. Look at some of the people they wanted to cast for this movie. Robin Shaw is Goku, Brandon Lee is Gohan, Jet Lee is Vegeta, Nicole Kidman as Bulma, Dolph Lundgren as Broly, Leonardo DiCaprio as Trunks, Danny DeVito as Yajirobe. Oh, look at this right here. More than 140 episodes of DBZ have aired in the US. Wow, it's crazy to think that that's only half the series. They even had a 3D section in this one. Yeah, I know my copy of this book is destroyed. It's too bad I don't have any of the glasses. There's a section here about Super Botoden 3 on the SNES, which we never got in the US. It was always cool to look at stuff like this because it seemed like we would never have the chance to play it ourselves. <laughs> okay, Frieza Burn. The new Frieza Saga puts a major dent in Anger decks. And here's a section that gives you the value of each individual card from the collectible card game. I never really got into the cards, although I do have a whole binder full of them. I've got quite a few unopened booster packs. I remember GameStop sold them to me for one penny each. They were trying to get rid of them. Most of them were actually Dragon Ball GT cards. I've still got the unopened Broly cards from the original release of the movies. Yeah, there's tons of stuff we could look at, but let's move on to the games. Oh yeah, games. This game has two sequels, The Legacy of Goku 2 and Boo's Fury. Why not just call it Legacy of Goku 3? I, I... Today, we're going to take an in-depth look at all three, but first things first, got to play the theme song. Gonna take you back to the... Oh, right. I should be original. So where do I begin? These games were developed by Webfoot Technologies, an Illinois-based company that creates licensed games. These RPGs were, and kind of still are, their main claim to fame. You start out on Master Roshi's Island, and before you can truly begin the game, 
you have to collect three porn magazines. It only takes about five seconds, but until you do it, Raditz ain't coming. Not like that. It's after Gohan's been kidnapped when you really start getting a feel for the gameplay. As you can see, in classic RPG style, it's an overhead view. You can only move Goku up and down or left and right. You punch with A and use energy attacks with B. The green meter in the top left corner is your key, while the red is your health. If you've played this before, then you know how stiff the controls are. If you haven't, you'll be able to see it with the combat. You spend the first part of the game murdering squirrels, snakes, and crabs, but the hitboxes are taken way too literally. Your fist has to line up with the animals perfectly. This shit defies perspective. Look how ridiculous this is. It's fine against snakes, I guess, but once you encounter something that has the balls to fight back, taking damage is mandatory. Thankfully, you have to pause the game in order to heal, so it's pretty hard to die. Oh, and you heal with herbs, which probably explains why Goku is killing animals in the first place. The last mechanic to mention is the flying. You find these little orbs with wings on them to refill your flight meter. Yes, that's right, you have a flight meter. During the early game, your airtime is mercilessly limited. You mostly use it to get over water or ascend cliffs, but you can only pass through terrain that favors the camera angle. I know, I just started and I'm already complaining, so let me say some nice things before I get carried away. I think visually, for the most part, it's pretty awesome. And it's not like the environments are empty or anything. The soundtrack is also completely original. I wouldn't call it a lazy game, it's more like a rough draft. There are a lot of side quests on your path to Raditz, such as rescuing a pterodactyl egg, rescuing a stranded guy, rescuing a toy boat, rescuing a child. Yeah, a lot of rescuing. Every quest rewards you with experience. There's also this one dinosaur with seemingly infinite HP. Fuck. That. So, I called them side quests before because that's the vibe they give off, but you're actually required on some level to do all of this rescuing bullshit. Yeah, this one old man is powerful enough to prevent Goku from leaving. Maybe he should fight Raditz. Finally, after all that, the path opens so you can move on. Remember, in the anime when an old man teaches Goku solar flare? Yeah, me either. Actually, solar flare is pretty useful. Piccolo does jack shit to help, so it comes in handy to stop Raditz in his tracks. The longer you charge it, the longer he's stunned. He just stands there and takes it. I forgot to mention the low-resolution anime stills, and extremely compressed voice clips, but like this image here where it shows the wrong scene of Goku and Gohan. There are actually quite a few stills from the series that pop up. Oh, and the voice clips? It's mostly just Goku crying out in pain or grunting. There's also the Kamehameha wave, which comes later. After Raditz, you end up on Snake Way, only to fight Princess Snake and then fall down into hell. Sorry, H-F-I-L. Yeah, they included the filler stories, which is honestly fine because it adds length to the game. 
And for some reason, the souls take an absurd amount of punches to kill. About time. It gets easier with some level grinding, but goddamn. The goal is to return three troublemaking souls to an assistant, but the ones you need to escort are indistinguishable from the rest. How do you find out which souls you need? You talk to them. And if you're wrong, you'd better get punching. During the process, you run into Mez, who says he'll tell you where King Kai is if you can catch him. It's a scripted event, so once all three souls have been collected, you get access to King Yemma's fruit, and you can use that to catch Mez. Once back on Snake Way, you can quickly fly to King Kai's planet. Don't know where all these damn orbs were before I fell. You catch Bubbles and Gregory, as you might expect, and it's just enough of a pain in the ass to be... kind of fun. As a reward, King Kai teaches you the Kamehameha Wave. The Kamehameha Wave? Not the Spirit Bomb? Could they have chosen a worse take? Why is it so awkward? Something's fucky here. Why does he say it after he shoots? That's not how it works. Like, imagine you were being detained by the police. Imagine the officer says, hands behind your back, but only after he's already put your hands behind your back. Kinda defeats the purpose at that point. That's what Goku's doing here. And yes, I know it's an official sample from the series. To be exact, it's at the end of episode 91, during the fight with Frieza. Yeah! At least it kind of worked in that context. Anyway, now you might see what I mean when I say rough draft. Well, time for me to go back to Earth and fight the Saiyans. And if you think the images were low res, check out this video clip. Still pretty cool though. So I'm wished back to life and can make my way to Nappa and Vegeta with my brand new attack. After doing another ass load of good deeds, you finally find the Saiyans. But before we get into that, I need to touch on something. I briefly mentioned earlier that this game's soundtrack is all original music. But, back in 2001, North America was experiencing the series with the Bruce Falconer score. In other words, the soundtrack was completely redone by Funimation and the compositions were replaced with modernized synth rock. Whatever your feelings about that now, it doesn't change the fact that many fans grew up with the Falconer score. So, MIDI tracks based on that were to be expected, especially given that this game is American made. Now, in Legacy of Goku 2 and 3, that is what they did, but when it comes to this game, personally, I feel that only one track really stands out. Now this is fucking battle music.
Yeah, they're dead. Unfortunately, you don't get to play the second half of the Vegeta fight where he and Gohan transform, but you get to watch it at least. I'm the most powerful warrior in the universe! At least it's amusing. I really shouldn't set my expectations too high. This is first year Game Boy Advance after all. So now we're on Namek, and since you only play as Goku in this game, much of the Ginyu Saga has been skipped. Instead, you enter a destroyed Namekian village. H have you seen any saplings, friend? I'm sorry, I'm not sure what you mean. Our trees must be saved. They once gave life to our world, but are now vanishing. These evil ones who have attacked our world, they are killing us and our source of life. I must plant the saplings before I can rest. If you find any baby trees, will you please plant them for me? It's our o only hope for the future. What, I have to plant trees now? That never happened in the show, we're back on the fucking rescue missions. At least the enemies here include henchmen, instead of just wild animals. What the hell was that? <laughs> I clearly made contact. Not sure why it's a short range blast to begin with. These trees are a pain in the ass your first time playing because they look just like part of the environment, so if you're not paying attention, you could easily walk right past them. Eventually, you stumble upon a big ass temple. And holy shit is it confusing. There are teleporters and henchmen everywhere. It doesn't matter how many times I play through this game, I always get lost at this part. Like, even if all the shit I complained about didn't exist and this game was really solid, I would still fucking hate this part. It's all about trial and error. You just gotta keep testing teleporters and try not to lose track of where you've been. But good luck. The enemies respawn, which is annoying for a while, but eventually you're so leveled up that they die in one or two hits. Alright, I'm getting pretty far this time. Okay, let's try again. Okay, this looks right. Okay. Well, I guess I found a good spot to grind levels. Even my pathetic Kamehameha's are one-shotting them now. Guess I gotta go through this teleporter. Well, what the fuck? Eventually, you find a room to place three artifacts. And hopefully, your desperate exploration of this godforsaken temple means you've already found them all, though two of them are outside. Once they've been placed, an exit teleporter spawns so you can get out. Oh, about fucking time. Why didn't Goku just fly to the battle like in the... Never mind. So I fight the Ginyu Force, and because of all the temple grinding I did, they're piss easy. It doesn't help that they attack you one at a time. It would have been way more fun if they all attacked you at the same time. After that, you're taken to Frieza's ship, just moments away from the final showdown. The goons in this area are actually kinda hard. Much tougher than the Ginyu Force, which Makes no sense from the series standpoint. Oh wow, I actually died. 25 is the highest level, so after some last minute grinding, I enter the rejuvenation chamber. Next thing you know, you're on the battlefield with Frieza. I wish I could say it was enjoyable, or at least difficult, but it's those stiff controls. They make the combat super repetitive. You've got two options. Solar Flare followed by a blast, or Solar Flare followed by a handful of punches. Or, I guess it would be a fistful, whatever. The combat is boring. 
You'd have more fun trying to read a book upside down. Action movies. They tend to have generic stories but are entertaining because they have good action. Like The Matrix. You wouldn't watch that if Neo just kept freezing Agent Smith to get in a few cheap shots before running away. No. If the antagonist isn't presenting a challenge, then the entertainment is lost. Just like it is here. At least it goes through all of Frieza's forms. Just rinse and repeat until he reaches his final form. That kick-ass track from the Vegeta fight comes back on, and you become a Super Saiyan. Go through the motions one last time, and there you go. The only payoff here is that you get another video clip showing Namek explode. A brief explanation sets up the next game, and then the credits roll. It's pretty abrupt. I spent a lot more time on that game than I thought I was going to. The plan was to do all three at once, but the second and third games are much longer, so I kind of feel like now they have to be their own thing. Well, regardless, let's pop in Legacy of Goku 2 and see what happens next. Today, we're going to take an in-depth look at all three, but first things first, 